Hi, and welcome back to India on 99.94, your home of Indian cricket content on the 99.94 app on YouTube and via your usual podcast provider. As always, I'm Nikesh Raghani, BBC commentator and your host, and my co-host Sara Waris of Wisden alongside me. And Sara, it seems as though the uh, the Indian cricket gravy train never stops. And today we're going to be talking about IPL, retentions, releases, transfers, all that type of business. Still a while to go until IPL 2023, but the teams are already starting to take shape. Of course, there'll be a, a mini auction this time around, you know, not, not a mega auction like last time. So most of the players will remain with their current franchises. But there have been some interesting movements, haven't there, in, in recent days. So we'll discuss all that. Um, just before we get into it, though, Sarah, we are recording this particular episode on the anniversary. And, and how could we not mark this anniversary, really? The anniversary of Sachin Tendulkar's retirement from international yeah. cricket. It's been nine years. Where's yeah. that time gone? I mean, how, how many times in those nine years have you watched that speech at the Wankadi Stadium at the end, that farewell speech. And don't tell me you weren't in tears every time you saw it. Yeah, Sachin, Sachin will reverberate in my ears till my last breath or something. Uh, it was emotional and especially for me, I started following cricket very late and still I was emotional. So I can't imagine, you know, people like you who grew up watching Sachin Tendulkar, who possibly took up cricket uh, because of Sachin Tendulkar. You know, he's like the Virat Kohli of my era. If Kohli retires, I'll be all over the place. Uh, so I can't imagine what it must have been for, for people like you, you know, following him from the very start of his career. Yeah, I've I've already planned later on this evening to to watch that speech again and and maybe some highlights of of some of his greatest innings as well. It just has to be done. I mean, what a legend and yeah. IPL winner, of course, with the Mumbai Indians, um, Champions League winner. You remember that? That was yeah. a thing, wasn't it? That, I think they need to bring that back now. It didn't quite necessarily work back then because the quality of uh, other T Twenty leagues wasn't quite up there and it was always IPL teams dominating but you know maybe that's one for the future but let's start then with the Mumbai Indians if we're on the Sachin theme as well and some big news from them yesterday Karan Pollard deciding to I mean he put out the statement he said he's retiring from IPL cricket he's going to continue on as a batting coach for the Mumbai Indians and play for the MI Emirates franchise in the UAE T20 league as well which it's good to see him still carrying on as part of that Mumbai Indians brand because he is part of the furniture and an absolute legend of that franchise, a legend of the IPL as well. But it, it's probably the right decision and I'm sure that the Ambanis would have had a word with him and Jai Wardner, the, the head coach, would have had a word with him. Got his thoughts and just sort of suggested to him that, look, we think your time is up. And, and that it leaves a massive hole, doesn't it, for the Mumbai Indians? What a legend. Yeah, one of the biggest legends, you know, superstar, uh, played a huge role in Mumbai's successes. He and Hardik Pandya was still up and coming, but it was Pollard, you know, who just took on the reins in the middle order. Even Surya Kumar was relatively new and uh, single-handedly uh, single had such a big impact on Mumbai Indians and their five uh, championship um, wins. Uh, another thing with Pollard is that if he, Mumbai were never going to retain him, but if he decided to uh, continue playing and put his name in the auction, I don't think he would have gone unsold. You know, some team could have picked him up. He's just th 35, not very uh, young, but you know, not old. <laughs> Rohit Sharma is 35. So, you know, not that uh, not that old. He could have easily played a couple of years. You know, just having him in the team for his experience and everything could have... Uh, but, you know, his loyalty towards Mumbai Indians was like, I'm if I'm not playing for Mumbai, I'm not playing against Mumbai also. This was his line in the speech which he gave... Uh, the speech as in the, uh, the statement from... Sachin's speech is still in my head. <laughs> so, you know, the statement which he uh, gave out yesterday. Uh, yeah. So, you I, know, I loyalty. Like that. Yeah. I like that because you don't often see that in franchise cricket. I mean, you see yeah. it with the odd player, the odd icon player and stuff like that. But 
even in football, I mean, you look at Premier League football over the years and, and you have certain players associated with certain clubs. And, and I know Lionel Messi has now moved on from Barcelona, but, you know, you'll always associate him with Barcelona and it wasn't really his decision that. to leave. And Well, you didn't know, but, you know, football <laughs> fans and, and many cricket fans who follow yeah. football will know that Messi equals Barcelona. I know he's at Paris now, but, you know, there was money issues and all that kind of stuff involved and why Barcelona couldn't keep him. He'll be back. He'll go back to Barcelona, I think, one day before the end of his career. So there's iconic players like that. You know, you look at Manchester United, Ryan Giggs was there, you know, throughout really, throughout his whole career. And and there are certain players, Tony Adams at Arsenal, you know, the list goes on. That's changing in football now where players are transferring to rivals and it's always happened in franchise cricket. And uh, I think part of the reason why I wouldn't like to see another mega auction in a few years' time in the IPL is just to sort of have that brand built a little bit more for these franchises. And, and it look, as, as the IPL expands, it may well have to happen just to make it fair for the new teams coming in. But I just like to see these players, these icons like Virat Kohli with RCB. He's already said he won't play for another franchise as long as he plays in the IPL. Rohit Sharma, you know, I know he was at Deccan, but, you know, his long association Mm -hmm. with the Mumbai Indians as well. So it's, I I just like to see more of that. And and I think it's refreshing. Um, But from a Mumbai Indians point of view, they've released 13 players. Pollard's the biggest name on there. But obviously, you know, as you say, getting on in years, I think a massive problem for them is the bowlers because they've retained, obviously they're going to retain Jasprit Bumrah and they've retained Jofra Archer. who's not played a single match for them, but was part of the, you know, part of their roster last season, even though he was unavailable to play because of injury. There's injury concerns over both of them anyway, with Bumrah's long-term back issues and Jofra Archer just coming back and uh, start, starting to practice in the nets of late. So hopefully, fingers crossed for them that, you know, and, and for every IPL fan that they will be fit because everyone wants to see them. But also their spin bowling. They haven't got a spinner. Mayank Markande released. Uh, Morgan Ashwin released. I mean, they they weren't great spinners anyway. They were okay. They could do a job. But they they had that whole last season really without a top quality spinner. And now they've released both. Are they? You'd think their tactic would be to go into the market and, and get somebody big, right? Yeah, but then um, there's not really an Indian spinner really, uh, you know, an established Indian spinner in the team. The Ashwin, the Chehels, Kuldeep Yadavs, Rahul Chehels and uh, Varun Chakrabarti also, you know, all of them have already been retained by their team. So the best that uh, Mumbai can do is, you know, look for a domestic player who's not doesn't have a lot of experience. And this could again be a... a area that which comes to haunt them and though they're developing a very strong middle order you know with David and uh Brevis there and um Surya Kumar obviously uh it's just well. that you know last year also yeah Tilak Varma yeah. yeah but last year it was just bowling which came to affect them and the uh selection of Archer was also, you know, debated that, you know, you're letting go of a season. Mumbai Indians was a team which could do that. I spoke to the Rajasthan's uh, CEO uh, after the auctions and he had said, you know, Mumbai Indians are a team which can afford one or two bad seasons, you know, for the potential because they've done so much. Uh, And Archer selection was kind of like, you know, we are sacrificing one season for the future or something like that. But there are still question marks over if he will play and Bumrah also. So Bumrah, I think, might be fit. Again, your, you know, that tweet will go viral. You might post something like that again, how he plays in the IPL and not international and you'll get <laughs> rolled again. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, the bowling is an issue, but it's Mumbai Indians. Like, they will come back. The surprising thing was retention of... Rohit Sharma, I knew he would be retained, but then spending 16 crores on a player, you know, on most on a specialist captain, I think it's a price too much. Currently, he's getting more than Virat Kohli. So, yeah. yeah lo- loyalty works both ways, though, doesn't it? And the Ambani's have shown how loyal 
they are as well. So there was no chance of of that happening with with Rohit leaving the franchise. Um, I mean, in other headlines, Kane Williamson released by the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Are you, are you surprised by that? I mean, look, we we saw him in the T Twenty World Cup. He got runs on a couple of occasions, but I mean, he's he's not really looked like anywhere near the player that that we know he was, uh, particularly in this format. He's still a quality test player and will play ODIs for a few more years, you'd think, as well, and, and probably will captain New Zealand's T20 eyesight. But in terms of the IPL, he's not had a successful uh, last season, certainly, and, and even going beyond that. And even internationally, he's not really been doing the business. So I, I wouldn't say that's a big surprise, but I think a lot of people mm. may have been shocked just because of the fact he's a big name and the fact that they did so much to keep him, didn't they? They kept him over yeah. the likes of uh, of Rashid Khan and, and David Warner. Rashid Khan. Yeah, David Warner was anyway not going to be uh, retained because of all his issues with the management. And, you know, last year he didn't even play games in the second half, which was bizarre. He was sitting in the stadium and waving the flag. flag. That's how, uh, that's what he was reduced to in SRH. Unfortunate for him, he's a legend, like, he is a legend in IPL. Uh, with Kane Williamson, again, it was more than his release. His selection was bizarre, you know, because he had uh, his retention was bizarre, I would say. Uh, he had the elbow injury issues. He wasn't in great form leading up to the IPL also. Uh, and Rashid Khan... Like they released Rashid Khan to keep Kane Williamson in the side. Rashid Khan just said that, you know, he wants to be the first pick in the team. Like he would have got around 14 or 15 or 16 crores, something like that, if he was the first pick. And he wanted to be the first pick in the team because, yeah, he deserves that. He's Rashid Khan at the end of the day. Uh, but the SRH management was like, no, the best we can do is second, second, like you'll be a second pick, Kane will be the first. So, uh, because of that, they released Rashid Khan and now they're releasing uh, Kane also. So just bizarre decisions of very weird team. You know, they don't seem to get any of these decisions. It's l almost like a panic-stricken team. You know, they make these huge changes uh, season after season and none of them somehow seems to work. Although they are successful, they have two titles, but uh, off late, they, are, they have been inconsistent and like all over the place. And, and missing, obviously, Rashid Khan, who's, who's with the champions, Gujarat, we'll come on to them in a minute, but they, they need to address that issue as well, don't they? A, a quality spinner. Yeah. Yeah, probably, you know, they'll look for uh, Adam Zampa or even Adil Rashid. Adil Rashid, it's interesting. He's never played a lot in the IPL. Do you think he'll be picked this time because the Mumbai thing Indians is, Mumbai yeah. Indians need him they they need a quality a world class spinner and um, surely someone's got to pick Adil Rashid how can you not right how can you not I mean when Moen Ali Moen Ali's a quality player as well uh, and a friend as well so I, I kind of have to say that but no he's, he's obviously a quality world class player but when you're looking at the two of them in terms of as an all-rounder, okay, you could argue Moen gives more value to a side in terms mm -hmm. of being able to bat and bowl and bowl in the power play, which he does quite often as well, and, and just bat at different positions in the order. More of a flexible cricketer. But if you're just looking at somebody who's world-class at their particular chosen skill, which is leg spin bowling, Adil Rashid is is probably the best up best out of anyone in in T Twenty cricket worldwide at the moment. You'd probably say even more of a threat in some ways than um, mm -hmm. than a Rashid Khan because although Rashid Khan's world class, he's Adil Rashid's more of an attacking bowler who flights the ball more, he mixes mm -hmm. up his pace a bit more, doesn't just look to skid it in and keep it tight all the time. Um, so he's he takes more risks and and I think he gets more rewards for that. I know he didn't have the best World Cup up until the last couple of games, but big players show up on the big stage and he had a brilliant semi-final, yeah. an outstanding final as well. And uh, surely someone's got to pick him up. I think I think Mumbai Indians will be after him personally. Um, but yeah, Sunrisers yeah. could do with him as well. Right, plenty to still discuss. One thing before... Yeah, we'll take a go break on, and then go on. I can. Yeah, yeah one thing... Uh, <laughs> anything works. Go for it. Okay, yeah. So uh, one thing about uh, Rashid Khan, which you said just came to my mind, Brian Lara, he was with SRH this year and he said the reason they didn't go for Rashid Khan, they didn't retain him is because, you know, he doesn't pick up a lot of wickets. He 
controls the bat uh, like he controls the run flow but he does not pick up a lot of wickets and they wanted something um someone more attacking so yeah Adil Rashid could be a good option however Saresh failed to see that you know he's also a very uh, like utility batter down the order becoming fast into an all-rounder so again SRH are just dumb with their moves I would say yeah, Sunrisers, uh, yep, a lot of work for them to do, a lot of work for, for certain other sides to do as well. We'll discuss more after this short break. You're listening to Cricket's Conversation on 99.94. Whatever your team, we have the show for you on podcast, YouTube or on the 99.94 app. We have India, England, South Africa, West Indies and now Sri Lanka covered. If you want to find us, the best way is to follow us on social media at 9994DM by downloading the 9994 app or Google 99.94 on podcast. We speak cricket. So Mumbai and Sunrisers uh, discussed. I mean, we, we're not going to go through the, the entire squads. We'll be here all day if we were sort of doing that. We'll obviously preview the auction uh, when it does take place and the IPL season as well. But let's look at the defending champions then just briefly. Gujarat Titans, obviously led by Hardik Bandia, brilliant season last year, debut season, champions, um, couldn't have gone much better. I, I think the one surprise for me for, from their squad is uh, Lockie Ferguson has been released as well. And we know the value of having somebody like that in your squad uh, with that extra pace as well, that extra X factor. Surprise for you or not? He came to KKR, so yeah, happy with the move. <laughs> I'm not going to be, uh, like, I'm supposed to be not biased, but yeah, happy with the move because he's come to KKR. He had a lot of success in KKR, Pat Cummins released also. So yeah, happy with the move. Uh, surprising that Gujarat did let him go, but no complaints from my side, at least. One surprising thing for them is... Uh, the retention of Matthew Wade didn't really have a good season last year. Strike rate of 115, average below 20. Uh, not really been able to convert his international from uh, form for them. So do you think they could have possibly looked at someone like Phil Salt instead of you know Matthew Wade at the top of the order? Considering it's your team and you will have a little more input on uh, Gujarat. You see, it's a good question, by the way. And just before I answer it, yeah, it is my team. Although it's difficult because for years, you know, Gujarat never had a team. And even when the Gujarat yeah. Lions came in for two years, no one really got behind that because it was a temporary thing. Um, so I've always been a Mumbai Indians man, just from the fir very first season when I knew that Sachin was playing for the Mumbai Indians. Although I can't support anybody else against Sachin, right? So it's, mm. it's kind of been my team. But then last season, you know, a lot of people who I work with would say, oh, you've got to support Gujarat now, haven't you? You've got Gujarat. So I said, all right, I'll back Gujarat. And it, and it turned out pretty well. And, you know, I'll, I'll continue to to back them. But obviously still a massive soft spot for the Mumbai Indians as well. But, yeah, Matthew Wade, look, I think he's a good team man. I think he's a, he's one of those guys who you want going into war with you, if you see what I mean. You, you He's just a loyal guy. He'll give it his everything. He's, he seems to be good with the younger players as well. He's He's got a lot of energy when he's out there. He's a decent keeper. He can open the batting, which is, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, one of the reasons why he may be in there as well. I know Phil Salt, like you say, can do that that same sort of job or somebody uh, of that mould. But yeah, I just think there's there's a bit of loyalty there and, and they've obviously seen a lot in him in that first season to say, look, this is our guy. We're, we're going to back him for the next couple of years and, and hopefully he'll come good. Um, so yeah, I think Gujarat looking in good shape overall. Delhi Capitals, I mean, you know, led by our friend Mr. Punt. <laughs> I think uh, it's, it's always going to be good fun when he's uh, in charge of a side, and um, not not many changes for them. I mean, they they look like a, a decent outfit. They're always there or thereabouts in the last few years, aren't they? And um, you'd expect them with one or two additions as well to to be up there challenging once again. Just looking at the makeup mm -hmm. of their squad and. And the fact they're led by by somebody like a punt who I think gives that freedom to his players. Yeah. Again, very strong team. Uh, Shaw, David Warner, you know, the openers, possibly the most uh, 
feared opening pair in the IPL, David Warner, Shaw, both go after the bowling. Plus, left hand, right hand, so that's another advantage for them. Uh, there's Sarfaraz Khan in the middle order. There's Rishabh Pant and the bowling. Wow, the bowling. So there's uh, Ngidi, there's Mustafiz Rahman, there's Kuldeep Yadav, there's Andrik Nokia. Uh, so, Mitchell Marsh is also there in the team. So, amazing team. Yeah. And <laughs> it's pretty, pretty handy, isn't it, when you look at it yeah. all on on paper like that. So we'd expect them to Akshar be... Akshar Patel. Yeah. yeah. Although in Indian conditions, Akshar Patel's brilliant. So uh, mm. I think that'll be a successful one as well. Uh, they, they should have a good season. RCB, Faf, captain again. Mm. 38 yeah. years old. You you made this point to me earlier. But he's not really like a traditional 38. He's, he's in bloody good shape, isn't he? I yeah. mean... Blimey. He was in yeah. yeah, he was in good form in the CPL strike rate of 168, scored over 330 runs. So he was in amazing form. Uh just the thing is, because he doesn't play international cricket, you never know that, you know, uh, lack of game time can come to affect the team. We've seen that with Dhoni, although Dhoni's role is very different. He bats in the lower middle order. Uh, and uh, Chennai has have the liberty to, you know, send him an 8, 9 or something. And there are so many matches when he's not even come out to bat because uh, Chennai don't really need the him, the batter, as much as they need Dhoni, the captain, which is very different from what uh, Favre's role is. Uh, in RCB, he's the opener. 38, yeah, it's not really... Like, he is in very good shape. Uh, but then again, he's an overseas captain taking up an overseas slot. So, somehow, like how Ian Morgan was in KKR, that, you know, took up a spot without much return. So, uh, if he's not in form, will he drop himself? If he drops himself, who will be the captain? So, uh, that, that's, that's always the risk when you have an overseas captain in the IPL. Same with Kane also, that, yeah, you can drop. And you can't drop an overseas captain, so... Let's talk about a domestic captain then. MS Dhoni, Chennai Super Kings. Discuss. Yeah. Um, brilliant captain, but I think this is the last time that he's going to play. This is the last season that he will be no, in the team. No, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. He'll, he'll go on till he's 53. <laughs> he's already got grey hair. I know he dyes it. Uh, yeah. a lot you know depending on what time of the season it is but he's he's probably going to have lost all his hair before he retires from the IPL surely you, you can't have an IPL season without MS Stoney yeah even I'll uh, be retired he'll still be playing in the IPL that's true oh uh, but possibly you know CSK are looking ahead because the whole reason they appointed Jadeja as the captain last year was because you know somehow they know that Dhoni in a year or two or whatever it is. I don't think he's going to play for the next 10 years, though, realistically. Uh, but uh, that's the whole reason they appointed Jadeja. But then when Jadeja didn't do well, then they went back to the Hodi, almost like going back to ground zero. And now who is the next captain? Because Jadeja, I don't think they'll go to Jadeja again. Maybe they'll uh, make Gaikwad the captain. They'll hone him and that's why you know Dhoni is around to you know be around the bunch and possibly uh, have Gaikwad under his wings and because I don't see any other captain for Chennai Super Kings after Dhoni goes and one more thing with Dhoni is like there were a lot of talks that Jadeja might be released because he did have his issues with the team management last year and yesterday after the uh, retention list Jadeja did post something uh, like a tweet which said that all's well or something and you know it's a restart and there are reports that it was Chennai didn't really want to retain him but Dhoni was the one who convinced them and they retained him uh, so that's also another interesting aspect how Jadeja comes back and then fits into the CSK like set up again yeah um yeah, I, I just he, he, even if he's not going to be playing he'll he'll be around he'll, he'll be like the coach or the mentor or whatever he, he'll He'll have a part in Chennai Super Kings for life, won't he, um, MS Dhoni? Yeah. And he's, he's earned that as well, uh, to be fair. I mean, just very quickly, I mean, I say this a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but maybe there's a place for him in the Indian T20i side to, to be the captain. He's, he's still a good wicketkeeper um, and very tactically shrewd and just bat him at eight or nine 
and just have him in the team. Mm-hmm. I know he takes up a spot, but come on, he could do better than the current lot anyway. Um, but right, I digress. Um, let's let's get back on track. Before we take another short break, Punjab Super Kings. I mean, we could literally be here all day talking about all their problems now, all their problems last season and, and seasons before. They've they've been overall the worst performing side in IPL history out of all the, the original teams from the first season, whether you want to call them the uh, what, Kings Eleven, Punjab, Punjab Kings, whatever. That Punjab franchise is mm. it's not going anywhere in a hurry, is it? And um <laughs> I mean what what's what's the late who who are they lo- you said they might be looking to sign Sam Curran, right? Yeah. Uh they need someone in the middle order. Uh but then they have all their four overseas players fixed. They have Johnny Besto there, they have uh Bhanuka Rajapaksa there, who I think will play because he was brilliant in whatever matches he played last year. They have Liam Livingston there. Obviously, he will play. And they have Rabada there, uh, who obviously will partner Arshdeep Singh with a new ball. So, strong team. Even last year, they had one of the strongest teams heading into the IPL. Everyone was like, they might win and everything. But again, Punjab, just doing Punjab things. They didn't utilize Shah Rukh Khan properly. Mayank Agarwal at the top of the order was a success. They pushed him down to number three. And Shikhar Dhawan is the captain again, 38, 39 years old. Uh, you know, instead of going forward, they're again taking a step back and just makes no sense to release someone like... I think Mayank Agarwal's white ball game is very underrated. He's a very good uh, white ball cricketer. And making Dhawan the captain, his strike rate issues and, you know, with his age and all, he's not there for the long term, for one season, two seasons. So Punjab just look for look for short term benefits instead of long term things, I'd say. Absolutely right. So plenty of problems for Punjab. But we'll take another short break here and uh, discuss more off the back. If you love the language of cricket and want more, then head over to the 99.94 app and you can hear all of our podcasts and cricket commentary. We're adding new shows all the time and covering cricket series from all over the world. Be the first to hear all of our announcements by following us on social media at 99.94 DM. Welcome to Cricket's Conversation. So then we, we've talked about the Gujarat Titans and what a great season they had, their debut season. Uh, Lucknow Super Giants made their debut as well last season. And <laughs> I mean, nobody kind of saw those two sides um, getting as far as they did. Um, and, and, you know, big shock to the likes of the Mumbai Indians and Chennai Super Kings, who uh, were right down at the bottom of the table as well. Um, they've released Chimera, which yeah. I think is is quite a big one because... You look at somebody like a Chimera, you know, has been performing really well uh, over the last couple of years internationally. Um, you know, big name player. Didn't go for that much initially, two crores, but they've released him. Um, is that, I mean, who, who do they bring in to replace somebody like a Chimera? Uh, especially Chimera would have been handy with Mark Wood's um, injury concerns and everything. Uh about who they get in, there will be a lot of other options. But, you know, Chamira at 2 crore would have been a great player to have in the side. Somehow, I don't know how you feel, but I couldn't just get behind Lucknow Super Giants last year. Maybe it they was... they got the worst kit in the world, haven't they? Yeah. The, the kit is terrible. KL Rahul's the captain. So there is, it's not really yeah. inspiring. Do you know what I mean? He's not that Come kind of inspiring is... leader. Yeah. Yeah, it was overall a very dull team, you know, especially coming from me. I live in Lucknow right now, but I have stayed in Kolkata my entire life for almost 20, 25 years. I just moved to Lucknow recently, so everyone was like, wow, your second home, Lucknow is playing. I was like, I just couldn't get behind them, even though they had players like Quinton de Kock, Stoinis, um, and Ravi Bishnoi, but overall a very, like, I just couldn't get is there them. is there a lot of support in Lucknow for the franchise? Uh, Have they yeah, taken there is, to it? There is, but again, you know, it's a new new team and the people already have their existing... Most of them are Chennai uh, or Mumbai fans. I hate both teams. I... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, they just win too much. I don't like either of those teams. Well, so. Kolkata win nearly as much, by the way. They've got two IPL titles, so it's not as if you know they're they're the third most successful franchise, aren't they? And they're owned by you know Shahrukh Khan, one of the yeah. co owners, and Jui Chawla. So it's it's quite a big time as well. It's not as if you you know you're one of the little sides fighting against all these sides with loads of money. Yeah, it's 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 pretty high profile. Yeah. But then they've last won in 2014 and last few years they've just been a mess, you know, like just starting with Dinesh Karthik sending him at number three, which was, you know, he's become a finisher now and he would keep on saying that I wanted to bat lower down the order, Brendan McCullum pushed me up the order, so there was this huge thing and then last IPL, which Shreya Sayer saying that uh, the CEO of Enki Mysore, he interferes in team selections and team meetings and all. Obviously, later he clarified his stance, but we all know that that does happen. So it's not been the best like for KKR also. And surprisingly, they've got Shardul Thakur for 10.75 crore. I know why they got him. You know, the Indian seam all-rounders are very few. But now they just have seven crores left and they need to fill at least three overseas slots with the wicketkeeper also. So... Mm. Yeah, KKR. Yeah, KKR. They're uh, on paper. If if they can make some good signings, it's it's not a bad side. And you know, we like Shreya Sire. He's he's a. I was good, happy with the release captain. of Cummins, though. Yeah, I was happy with the release really? of Cummins, though. Really? Yeah, he gives a lot. Like not the best bowler. He he's just there to defeat Mumbai Indians. He scored that fifty. Last year with the bat, I don't know if you remember, in 17 balls or yeah. something, he scored was that Was that year before and, or was it last yeah. year? No, it was this year, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, I mean, th- there was the season before where I think if you ta- sort of tallied up how many wickets he got and how much he cost, it, what did yeah. he take, like three wickets in the whole thing? So it was like garors per wicket, you know. Mm. <laughs> it was yeah. He was getting more runs. He was actually more of a valuable batter the season before, wasn't he? Um, so, yeah, look. You know, they'll the, it'd be interesting to see that makeup as well. Um, are we are we missing anyone? Rajasthan Royals, of course. Rajasthan. Um, RR. Ashwin retention, I think, is the only debatable thing from there. Ashwin retention, five crores. Um, doesn't make sense. Doesn't not make sense. Yeah, but he's their pinch hitter, isn't he? So they've, <laughs> they've <laughs> yeah. and it's worked a couple of times. So. Th- Again, it's one of those franchises. You look at certain places like the Mumbai Indians, the Chennai Super Kings, maybe Rajasthan Royals as well. So loyal that like the ownership group is mm. so loyal to some of their players. Um, sometimes you you can understand it because they've earned the right through their performances and they get that extra couple of years just because of that. Um, sometimes you don't understand it and, and they just pick people because they're there and they like them and, you know, they m- no, don't necessarily make the tough decisions at times as well. So, yeah, interesting one. Rajasthan Royals is is practically like a, a London franchise or an England franchise because yeah. they've obviously had that history of having, you know, the association with, you know, they had at one time Jofra Archer, Ben Stokes and Joss Butler there. And... Um, Manoj Badale, of course, uh, British Indian is is the owner. The chief exec is English. You know, every everyone's English there, so um, it, it's kind of by default um, supported by a lot of people in England. A lot of England cricket fans follow the Rajasthan Royals as a result. But right, I think we've we've covered every side briefly. Anyway, just one thing, yeah, just an overall view. Um, Looking down the list, do you, do you see that the impact of West Indies player in the IPL is reducing and does that indicate, you know, that um, the overall whatever is going on in the country is being reflected in how the IPL teams are looking at uh, West Indies player? Because except for Russell and Orion, they're not a lot of big players, like even Jason Holder has been released. Uh, Evan Lewis is not there. Puran has been released, so yeah, the you know West Indies. Look, once there's, upon there's, a time. Yeah. yeah, there's always talent in the West Indies, and you know, I'd I'd be interested to hear from our colleagues on uh, West Indies on ninety nine point nine four their thoughts on the. I'm sure they've discussed it as well. I mean, leagues like the IPL basically caused a lot of these West Indian stars yeah. at the time when the IPL came about 
to become effectively freelance cricketers mm. and, and not loyal to the board and not contracted by the board because they weren't getting the money that they felt they should have got on those central contracts and the freedom to play in these leagues. So they effectively went freelance, just turned up for the big tournaments um, when they came about, the World Cups and things. And that generation is gone now. The, you know, Chris Gales and you know all that generation, you, even the Pollard now, Russell's getting on a bit and Orion doesn't play for the West Indies anymore because of all those issues. And that generation is moving on. There's, there's obviously always going to be talented cricketers coming through the West Indies system. But when they're not sort of, you know, when they're defecting to these leagues and, and things like that at a young age, is is that a hindrance to them? Should they be sort of playing international cricket and, and sort of challenging themselves yeah. on that stage before they then feel that they have the right to to go and play in these franchise leagues. And the overall infrastructure of West Indies cricket is is it's a bit of a mess. It has been a mess for quite some time. Some would argue it's always been a mess, but it just worked because of the way international cricket was back in the day and, and the fact that there weren't any of these leagues to go and defect to. And and West playing for the West Indies was the highest honor that all these players could have. And there's so much talent, as I say, always coming through. So yeah, one for the the guys on West Indies on ninety nine point nine four. I'd love to hear their thoughts on that, uh, specifically related to the IPL. But yeah, you're right. It, once upon a time, they were the most sought after. But as we've seen with their performance, they didn't make it to the Super Twelves of this year's World Cup. So maybe that's an indication of where West Indies cricket is at at this present time. Uh, but, you know, we, we hope we will see more talent coming uh, on the international scene and in leagues like the IPL in years to come. But right, I think we've covered everything IPL-wise for now. Um, so thank you very much for listening and see you next time.